The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community and online store built for engineers and hobbyists alike. Join now and browse the store at element14.com. Benjamin J. Heckendorn was a mild-mannered graphic artist until he was bitten by the electronics bug. Now, every week he takes on new projects, shares tips and tricks, and answers your viewer questions on The Ben Heck Show. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. Soldering is a big part of the projects I do. I've gotten a lot of practice over the years, but I've also left a pile of dead, poorly soldered PCBs in my wake. Today I'm going to be showing you some techniques to take your projects to the next level and to save you from a bad experience I recently had with the circuit board of yesteryear. But first, the news. In Ben news, I've been working on the Ghost Squad pinball some more. We were going to have an AMD eFusion 350 computer running Linux to give us video and actually control the game along with a rich sound experience, but we're not going to have that done in time for the Midwest Gaming Classic in March. So I'm going to revert to just using a microcontroller along with the DMD and the existing audio that I know will work. That way we can have this game done in time for March and you can all play it. Because as you can see the game is basically mechanically done, we just need to do the artwork and the code. That soldering can come back to haunt you. That's why in today's episode we're going to be doing a soldering tutorial, specifically surface mount parts. To demonstrate surface mount soldering, I'm going to be putting together the X-Mega X-Protolab from Gabatronics.com. It's a kit that actually turns into a little tiny oscilloscope. I bought it at Maker Fair. It's going to be a good project for this because there's different types of components on it that we can put together, such as an OLED screen, uh, integrated circuits, and lots of resistors and connectors. Let's get started. The tools you will need for surface mount soldering are solder, desoldering wick, tweezers, X-Acto knife, magnifying glass, flashlight, helping hands, and of course, a soldering iron. I'm just going to start by sorting the parts by type in little piles. I'm going to put the parts on in a certain order. I'm going to start with the smaller parts, smaller and lower parts first, and then put on the taller parts like headers and screens. The reason for that is, if you put the taller stuff on first, it kind of gets in the way. You know, you can't get around it as easy to get to the smaller stuff. You do the smaller stuff first, it's kind of flat and part of the package, and then you add on the bigger things later. So, smaller first, bigger later. We're gonna do all of one part at once. So I'm gonna start with the um, one microfarad capacitor here. So I'm gonna carefully open up this surface mount package. Now these are meant to be built by robots, or what they call pick and place machines. That's why they're packaged like this. But I am not a robot, contrary to popular belief, so I have to do this carefully. So there are six capacitors. Now let's prepare the board. Normally this would be done in a solder oven, which you've seen on our show before, but we're gonna do it by hand. So I'm gonna take a little solder, and the mo number one most important thing about soldering is pre-tinning. And that is to put solder on the parts you're going to solder together before you solder them. Solder likes to stick to solder. That's the basic rule to keep in mind. So I've pre-tinned these four points, and going off the sheet, I'm going to attach the capacitor to it. Using the tweezers, which are the most important tool I have, seriously, they are, we put it in place, and then we're gonna melt the solder around it. This is similar to what would happen in a solder oven, but manual. One thing that I like to do, I don't know if it's the right thing to do, but once you get it in place, you heat up the side of it with some more solder, and then see how it kind of aligns itself, similar to like what it would do in an oven. And we hit this one here, but that's okay. If you dry off your tip, or basically remove the solder, you can remove solder just with the solder and iron, just go in there and pull it away real quick. All right, that one's in place. Let's place the other one. So we move on to the next part, which are some more capacitors. Then I'll move on to the resistors. I can't stress enough how important tweezers are. These are literally my most often used tool in the shop. So find a pair you like and stick with them. I've had these for like 12 years. 
Okay, so I have all the capacitors on the board. Now I'm gonna do the resistors. Resistors are basically the same form factor as capacitors. I believe these are 0805 size resistors. So I'm gonna put these in place and then I'll move on to the other components. I'm just gonna use the heat gun to attach the crystal the right way. James Bond, 007. All right, I've got most of the resistors on, so it's more important than ever to not make mistakes. So I'm gonna kinda come down with the soldering iron, not sideways, because I don't wanna hit anything that's already on the board. Again, I'm pre-tinning it. When you grab the resistors, you wanna grab them with a really light touch and not drop them like I just did. If you grab something tightly, it'll fly away on you and then you could lose it. So hold on loosely but don't let go. Looks like some solder hit two resistors. I'm gonna have to fix it. There's a couple ways you can do it. One way is by kind of pulling the solder away with the iron itself. It's gonna heat it up. I'm just gonna kind of go whoop. See, really quick motion will pull the solder away. The other way to do it, you know, wreck it again, is use solder wick. This is braided copper. And what it does is it sucks up solder really good. So I'm gonna put the solder wick against it and then heat it from the top. And the solder wick will pull the solder away as well. You could also use a desoldering iron, but in this case, it's kind of overkill. And you could almost like suck up the little resistors, so you don't want to do that. All right, I'm gonna put on the last few resistors and then we'll move on to the next type of part. Have you heard about Element 14 TV, the new online TV channel for engineers? At Element 14 TV, you'll find videos from some of the hottest names in engineering. Not only will you find episodes of my show, but also videos by Jerry Ellsworth, Arduino tutorials by Jeremy Bloom, and much, much more. Element 14 TV features some of the most innovative new products happening in engineering today that just might inspire you to try something new. You can also find the latest videos from the world's leading electronic manufacturers, all in one place. The entire video library is completely free, so join Element 14 today and tune into Element 14 TV, the brand new TV channel for engineers. This is just another way that Element 14 makes it easy for engineers to be inspired and find the solutions they need to get the job done. And now, back to the show. All right, let's attach these LEDs. Well, you can't see it on the camera, but there's a little arrow on the bottom of the LED, which um, tells us which way to mount it, so. Sometimes there'll also be a little color band on top. Again, this is usually done by robotic machines from the Fucha, but the moral of the story is these things are human solderable, so to speak, so. It can be done, don't despair. Next, I'm gonna put on this integrated circuit. This isn't the microcontroller, but it's part of it. So the orientation, I'm gonna look at a couple different things. You see a line here. It's either gonna be a line or a dot, which you can also tell by the way the text is going on a circuit. See how the text is going this way? Pin one will always be this corner versus the text. So if you think about the text being here, pin one is here. So if the text was upside down, the pin one would be here. So we look at the text on our chip versus that, and we know that the position of this is like that. So I'm going to solder this. Again, it's not too bad. We don't really have to pretend this one. We can do something else. So I'm going to take this chip. I'm going to solder the two opposite pins first just to get the orientation of the pin right. Those tweezers are a little too big or small, so I'm going to get these other ones. Get over here. All right, so, okay, see so I got one leg there. I got one leg, and now what I can do is I can kind of pivot off that, rotate it just a little. Okay. I'm gonna show you an example here of how to pull the chip up. Positioning of it's not quite right, so I'm gonna take this little X-Acto knife. Remember, X-Acto knives aren't, aren't just for cutting. They're also good for wedging into tight spaces. I'm gonna heat up this side and watch how it'll move. See that? See how it's moving? Now I switch to my tweezers. Repeat the process. I can use the weight of the PCB to pull it away. Yeah, there we go. All right. Set that aside. I want to go in here and tin these. Again, solder will wick pretty well, so. This is gonna blob some solder on. 
That's why they have the green stuff on the circuit board. That's the solder mask. That way only the spots that you want to have solder will get solder. All right, so I'm gonna put the chip back on. Oh no, two pins got connected together. Well, that's a case where you use the solder wick. Ta-da. Do that for the other side, and then we'll move on to the next part. All right, so I fixed the pin on this side and that side. Okay. So I'm going to do the rest. So I'm just gonna flood these. I know this seems like the weird way to do it, but it actually works pretty good. Heat it up to make sure it gets under the pins. And then we will remove it. Remove the excess solder, I mean. Let's get the wick. So I pre-tinned all these contacts. Now this is copper, so it should connect pretty well. I don't, I've never actually attached one like this before. Hope I can do it. Okay, got one. As I mentioned before, you do one, then you do the other side, then you do the rest. All right. I have the screen in place and most of the electronics. I did run into a snag. I had a short when I wired up the screen and the reason I knew that was because the regulator got really hot. So I used the multimeter to sense the three volt line. And the three volt line only had about, about half an ohm of resistance to ground, which told me there was a short. So I went over these again and made sure they were clean and not touching and that resolved the short. So the final thing is to put on these headers and switches and then we can test it out. Got all the headers in place. Now I'm just wiring up the control switches and we'll be ready to go. All right, the miniature oscilloscope is all put together. I plugged it into the breadboard and now we can test it. I'm gonna be using this big breadboard to test it with. This is the uh, pinball driver system that I've been working on and it uses a uh, matrixing, which means the light columns are pulsed. Do, 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 do. They're pulsed in a row and that'll be perfect for giving us a signal that we can see with the oscilloscope. So I'm going to hook channel one of the oscilloscope into light channel zero and plug channel two into light one. So we should see the two waveforms right in a row. So we're gonna power up the oscilloscope. It just uses a USB connection for five volts. There it is. It's got a nice little OLED screen. All right, there's our two channels. I'm gonna turn on this system. Okay, now I'm going to set it to auto scan should, okay, there we go. See our two waveforms here? Let's see if we can zoom in on a little bit. So you see channel one is high and then channel two is high. So if I move channel two a little further back, it will skip ahead one position. See that, so how there's a gap between them? So yeah, there we go. We use surface mount soldering to wire up a little portable oscilloscope. Um, as long as you take your time and don't spill solder everywhere, Surface mount soldering is totally doable by hand. Well, most of it is. That's a soldering tutorial for today. I wanted to show you that it is possible to hand solder surface mount components, though it takes a little time and technique. Now that you know all my tricks, you'll be ready to solder your own mini oscilloscope that can be helpful with projects when you need to do some data sniffing. There you have it, a hand soldered surface mount project made without a solder oven or a robot. I need to take a minute to rant about troubleshooting. On the show, we edit out all the hours of troubleshooting that can go into a project. I mean, how interesting is it to see me bang my head against the wall trying to figure out a problem? Sure, troubleshooting is a necessary part of what I do, but it drives me crazy when the problem turns out to be something really simple, like a faulty connection. While that can be frustrating, I can rave about the simple problems in this way. A missing ground connection, a pin pulled high instead of low, I feel both dumb and relieved when I find them. But I'd rather feel dumb and get the project done than feel dumb because I can't find the problem. Plus, a simple mistake is much easier to fix than a fried project. Today's viewer question comes from Element14 user Lloyd who asks, is it possible to get Wi-Fi on the Raspberry Pi without using up a USB port for the Wi-Fi dongle? Not that I'm aware of, but remember, you can add a USB hub to the Raspberry Pi to expand the number of USB slots available. If you're adding a lot of USB devices, make sure it's a powered hub. The Raspberry Pi doesn't have unlimited power. That's all the time we have for today. In our next episode, we're going to be making an analog controller PC gaming keyboard. 
We'll see you then. Stay tuned at element14.com forward slash TBHS, where you can join the discussion, suggest builds for the show, and even have a chance to win upcoming builds. Remember, you can always email build ideas to benheck at element14.com. Thanks for watching.